Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. So this episode, I want to talk about how to make 100K a year as a developer, specifically how to plan and build a 100K a year software development career. And I want to talk about this because there was something I sort of noticed when uh, you look at sort of other information on this topic, uh, something that's missing. And so I wanted to sort of fill in the blanks here a little bit with this. Uh, that I think is going to help you to be able to do this a, a lot easier. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into this. So the thing I noticed is that a lot of times when people talk about you know how to make 100K, it really is anything how, as a software developer, as a freelancer, so forth. A lot of things that they focus on are like working hard and being proactive and sort of the day to day things that you need to do to impress your boss or, or whatever, your coworkers and be able to sort of move up that ladder. And that stuff's all great. However, I don't see necessarily as much talk about sort of strategy and planning. And I think in a lot of ways that can be a lot more important. And so the way that I would probably put this is just to ask the questions, what's the average salary for a senior level position in your current career path? Or what is the company you work for pay for senior level positions? Uh, if you if you don't know the answers to those, if you have to look up those answers, that's sort of what I'm I'm getting at. That's the point I'm trying to make is that those are things that you should really know the answer to because you've done the research and you figured out that and you know that you're on a career path that's going to lead you to a senior level position that pays what you want and is doing the kind of things uh, that, that you want to do. Working hard and, and being proactive and all the traditional advice is great uh, and it's true. But if you don't have a strategy that's actually going to lead you where you want to go, then it can, in a lot of ways, all be for naught. And I think a lot of people just sort of just trying to get a job and are just kind of out there, maybe not planning this stuff out. And so you just want to make sure that the ladder's on the right wall, uh, so to speak, because you can climb it as fast as you want. But if it's not climbing up the right wall, then you're ultimately going to end up where you don't want to be. So just, just again, the whole point here is having a plan and then a little bit how to do that. So with that said, let's let's talk about a few different career paths here. And I just picked something arbitrary, which is essentially two different languages here. I know that these aren't competing languages, but they are things that happen to be pretty popular right now. And as a developer, you can kind of go into anything. So I just wanted to show you this as an example. This isn't the point here is not about these specific languages or these specific numbers or any of that. It's just to show you uh, that that different sort of either languages or paths or things that you could do when things are different like that, that they can lead different places. So if you go on classstore.com and you look at a senior Python developer, you will find a lot of the the jobs that are listed on there between 125 and 150 K a year. Whereas if you look, uh, look for JavaScript jobs over on Glassdoor, you will find that a lot of the senior level positions are between 90 and a hundred K. So if you, if your goal is to make a hundred thousand a year and up, and you just sort of arbitrarily go into JavaScript, you might not know that making 100K is sort of at the top end in terms of sort of average salaries for a JavaScript developer. Now, I just want to address what I know is going to be the pushback here is, well, so-and-so, you know, I know has a JavaScript job and they make X, Y, Z. Or, you know, if you look in, at this particular company, they hire JavaScript developers uh, for X numbers. Again, I don't want you to get caught up on the specifics here. There, there may be JavaScript jobs out there pay more. Heck, the, the average salary on other sites may be more than this. That's not really the point. This isn't a, a Python versus JavaScript thing. This is a make sure that you know the, the path that you're going down before you go down it thing. Okay. So again, just comparing these on this two level, two levels, you know, for JavaScript, 100K is going to be towards the top end, whereas for Python, it's going to be sort of mid-range so you could be an average python developer theoretically and still make a hundred thousand dollars a year whereas again theoretically to be a hundred k javascript developer you'd have to be towards the top end in terms of your skill set so again that's just something to keep in mind again i'm not encouraging you to be mediocre or anything like that 
but having a path that's going to lead you where you want to go is the point here. Now, of course, salary is only one thing, right? You have to look at how many jobs are available because Python jobs could pay a lot more, but if there's only five available in the whole world, then that, that may be uh, something that isn't a path that you want to go down or a competition you want to get into. But if you go on indeed.com, you'll find that there are 29,000 Python job listings as of this recording, and there are 31,000 JavaScript job listings. So they're very comparable in terms of the amount of jobs that are available out there. So again, just the point here is not the specific numbers, but to just research your path. And it doesn't have to be one language versus another. It could be whole different segments of the industry, etc. But just re do the research and understand the career path and understand, you know, where you want to go and have that sort of end in mind before you even start. That That's the point here. Instead of just sort of arbitrarily getting a job and not really knowing where it's headed. Second thing then is the company. So over on Glassdoor.com, one of the listings I saw over there was one called Bloomberg LP. And they were hiring for a senior Python developer. So I click into the company to look for all of their job listings and they don't have, they have none or very few uh, junior Python developer listings. Again, I, I just did this quick. The point here is not these specific companies or these numbers, but the idea. But I, I check out their listings and they don't have any junior Python developer listings. Then I look at another company and they have a bunch of junior listings, but very few or no senior listings. And so if you're, again, if you're, just getting into your career and you want to get a junior level job that's going to lead to a senior level job uh, that pays what you want and you're doing what you want, then you have to also think about those companies. So is can, am I going to be able to, you might be thinking going in working for a company, well, I'm going to just stay at this company. I'm going to work here for a number of years. I'm going to move up and ultimately be a senior level sort of engineer here or developer here. And then if you actually look at the job listings, you realize, well, they don't have any senior level positions that they're hiring for. So the chances of me getting hired for that position are, are probably a lot slimmer than, say, a company like Bloomberg LP, which almost all of their positions tend to be senior level positions. So it's not that I can't go down that career path, but I, I know going in that I'm going to have to switch companies in order to get where I want to go. Okay, so that again, just knowing the route, knowing the path ahead of you, uh, and and planning it. The, uh, and ultimately, the bottom line is: is there a labor market to support the career path uh, that I want? You know, I want, I might want to make a million dollars a year writing uh, HTML three, <laughs> just to use an extreme example. <laughs> I, that might be what I want, but is there a labor market there to actually support that? So knowing that answer going in. So the thing to do here then, again, is to, to, to go back and do the research. That's ultimately what I want you to do. Research different career paths. Find out the kind of senior level position you want to have that pays what you want and you like the work, you, you like doing that kind of thing, and then find out if... There are any companies out there that have junior level positions, and if so, apply for those jobs. And if not, you'll find other companies that have the kind of junior position you'll need to, to work up to the senior level position. And don't just apply to any company or for any job. Apply at companies that have the career path you're after, or at least part of it, and seek out companies that have prestige in the industry so that when you apply other places, it's gonna give you an advantage. So if you have to move from one company uh, as a junior level developer to another company and trying to get a, a higher level position or senior level position, the company you're coming from has prestige. And the example I'll use is I, I've written down here, IBM Tririga. And this is actually comes from my little brother. When he first started out, his junior level position was at IBM. And he ended up uh, learning this software called Tririga. And IBM is the one that created that software. But there's a lot of other companies in that in industry that do consulting work or development work uh, based on Tririga. So when he went from IBM, he eventually went from IBM to another company. When he went from IBM to that other company, that other company, even though he was a, still a junior level uh, developer at IBM, the other company was very highly interested in him because he worked for the company who wrote the software that they wanted to hire him to work with. So 
that gave him some sort of prestige or, or, or some sort of credibility when he moved from one company to another. So try to try to plan that out as much as you can or, or do that research and figure that out so that if you do have to move companies, you put yourself in a good position to be able to move companies uh, and, and be able to make a move up because you worked for sort of a prestigious company in the industry. Now, as an aside here, I'm actually working with my little brother. You know, he's worked with with companies like Nike, CVS, Office Depot, uh, a search engine company that you might know of that I guess I, I can't say. But he's worked with a lot of these big companies on software development and consulting projects. And him and I are getting together to create a, a, a program called the 100K Software Developer Program. And essentially what we're going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick his brain about everything uh, that he knows about moving up very, very quickly. He moved from a junior level position, making around 40K up into a uh, 100K sort of senior level position in just a matter of a couple years. Um, and there's some things he did along the way that I find pretty interesting that I think could be useful for a lot of people. So essentially the program is going to be me picking his brain um, and, and him sort of revealing everything that he learned along the way uh, doing that. So if that's something that you're interested, you want to, you want to know exactly what to do and how to do it in order to move from, you know, maybe a 40 K or, or, or wherever you're at up into a six figure position, then, uh, you want to check out that program. It's not released yet, but it's coming soon. Uh, you can get on the notic notification list for when it goes live at a hundred K software engineer.com. So that's one zero zero K and then software engineer.com altogether. So, uh, check that out if you're interested. But ultimately, the big point that I want to hammer home here is, again, have a plan. Do the research. A lot of people just don't do this research. And sort of, it's kind of like freelancing when I talk about freelancing, uh, uh, researching a niche and doing that part, of, that, that part of things. That's the most important part. And people who actually put in the work there find themselves having a much easier time down the road. And it's sort of the same thing here is that if you do some of that research and that work up front and have a little bit of a plan, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it, have some sense of what in, you're getting into and, and get yourself into a career path that leads to a senior level the position that pays 125, 150, 200,000, whatever it is. That's going to, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get into that hundred K range and make what you want to make uh, and be able to do all the things that you want to do as a developer. So again, just make sure you get that ladder on the right wall. And the way you do that is by doing the research. So that's the big thing that I wanted to hammer home here. So that'll do it for, for this episode. Of course, if you liked the episode, I'd appreciate if you'd support the show. You can do that over at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. You'll get access to all of my courses, source code, a bunch of unreleased courses and source code and everything. Pretty much everything uh, that I create, I put over on Patreon. Uh, so johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon for that. Or if you want all my official release courses, uh, along with 21,000 other courses that you can get access to. You can go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare and learn how to get no-cost access to all of that. So again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.